Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, September 16th, 2013, and here are our top stories. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, was today's Navy Yard shooting rampage a massive drill designed to divert attention from Obama's executive mess and to present a show of force? Alex Jones joins David Knight to decipher the evidence. Plus, Obamacare wants Australian-style prison data collection, right down to your sex life. Then, the typhoon over Fukushima upsets an already volatile situation. All that and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, of course, our top story is the shooting today in the Navy Yard outside Washington, D.C., now, details are constantly changing, and they're sketchy at this point, but as we go to air, we are told that there are 13 people who have died, including the suspect. He has been identified as Aaron Alexis, 34, a military contractor from Texas, and police say that one other gunman may be on the loose. The other possible suspect, as described by police, would be a black male between 40 and 50, wearing an olive, drab-colored, military-style uniform. Well, as we mentioned, the details are constantly changing. We were told earlier in the day by Kathy Lanier, the D.C. police chief, you recall, she's the one who, in defiance of the Second Amendment and the Supreme Court, has disarmed people throughout D.C. We were told by the D.C. police chief that there were two other shooters. Now they're saying that it is possibly just one other shooter. So these details are changing. But what we can look at that's very interesting is how the initial reaction took place and the, the way the president and the media reacted to this. Of course, the president never lets a crisis go unused, as Rahm Emanuel warned him and uh, advised him. In this story from the Weekly Standard, the president issued a brief telling people what was going to be happening. And this is coming from, notice the different federal authorities he's got here. This is coming from the assistant to the president for Homeland Security and Terrorism, counterterrorism, I should say, deputy chief of staff. And also, they refer to their federal partners the Navy, the FBI, and finally they mention local officials. Now, of course, this is D.C., but notice the emphasis on the feds. Notice the federalization. Notice how they are in charge. And then he goes on in a story reported on InfoWars to say that basically just obey your president. First he says, I'm in charge. I'm here to protect you. Then he says, obey me. And the story from Adon Salazar says, cryptic White House message, respect authority. The White House attempted to take control of the situation by issuing an anonymous statement telling citizens to unquestionably obey orders from so-called authorities. We urge citizens to listen to the authorities, follow directions from the first responders, the anonymous source said. The timing of the White House request to trust it is interesting due to the fact that just last Friday, a Gallup poll indicated that Americans' trust in the government to handle problems is at an all-time low. Yes, Obama has kind of become the Rodney Dangerfield of world leaders. So this is something that is serendipitous at best, if not uh, something that they're, they're using it. If they didn't create it, we'll have to see. You know, whenever you have a situation where you've got a rapist that is in a particular neighborhood and someone is raped and there's an MO that looks exactly like what this rapist has done before, the first thing you want to do is investigate that rapist. So we're going to be looking very carefully to see if there's signs of a false flag. And we're going to have Alex Jones joining us this half-hour broadcast. And he's going to talk about what he sees with the latest developments. But what are they telling people to do? They're telling us to obey them. But what do they want us to do to obey them? Well, they're telling us to shelter in place, you know, kind of like duck and cover from the Cold War. And as Julie Wilson points out in InfoWars story, the shelter-in-place order leaves victims as sitting ducks. The Navy's issued a shelter-in-place order for personnel, which seems to fall right in line with the notion that you're not supposed to adequately defend yourself in the event of a mass shooting, but instead put your life and your safety completely in the hands of the police and other local authorities, or I should say federal authorities, certainly in this case. Sheltering in place is just as ridiculous as the DHS advising victims to use scissors to defend themselves. And of course, nowhere in the video that the DHS put out that they tell you that you should use a firearm or even own one because then that would put you somewhat in charge of your own security. The difference with this and the difference with the, besides the ridiculous advice that they used to give people during the Cold War, especially children, duck and cover, put your head in the metal desk so we can identify the dental records, I guess. 
The problem is, is that was just giving somebody something to do in what would be a hopeless situation. You're, you're in a city and there's an incoming nuclear weapon. When there's a shooter going on, you can do things that would really help to alleviate your risk of being killed. Staying in place, ducking in cover, rolling up in a ball, that just makes you more of a potential victim. You need to get out of there, get out of the area, and a lot of people did do that. Now, even though the Fed was taking credit for making us safe, this all happened in a disarmament zone. And remember that this is something where they not only disarm the citizens in D.C., but as we learned today, they have a history of even disarming the security guards, the personnel who are responsible for security, as well as soldiers on military bases. In a story by Kit Daniels on InfoWars, he said, the military brass says, we prefer our active duty as disarmed slaves. Since at least the 1950s, political motivations, quote unquote, have left American service members systematically disarmed during various military duties, which has led to mass casualties and gun-free zones, as we just saw in Fort Hood. Now, on this website today, there was a lot of posting back and forth with people who were talking about how this had been accomplished, what they had seen as military personnel on base. One of the posters on this back and forth wrote that while abroad a, uh, and on a Navy ship, he was issued a 1911 pistol with no ammunition. And as I point out, this is even worse than Barney Fife. At least Barney Fife had a bullet to put in his uh, gun. He had one bullet that he kept in his shirt. It's really more like uh, Sheriff Woody from Toy Story. You know, he's got the star, he's got the holster, but no gun. And we had several callers call in and give us some more insights about that and other things today on Alex Jones's radio show. I was stationed at the Naval Yard for two years. Uh, my girl's in the service industry. She knows a lot of troops down there. And uh, so we're looking through her Facebook, and um, multiple people work there. They have family members there. And uh, what's crazy is it seems to be trending that a lot of people weren't at work today. Um, one in particular says, uh, thankful my wife, mother-in-law, and brother-in-law did not go to work today. And then they say they're on safe. Um, but like I said, a lot of people have multiple family members who work in the building, and uh, a lot of people weren't at work today. Do me a favor. Well, well, we know on 9-11 the media called it a rumor, but it turns out and then spun it into Israelis not being in the towers. What was really said was Arab kids in, in New York Daily News, you name it, said those towers won't be there next week to their classes. And there was even a police investigation. So the media, rather than focus on that, spun it and said people say no Jews died when it was the media saying that themselves to change the subject. And uh, it turned out that the buildings were about half empty from what they would normally be at that building's occupancy. The buildings were already about a third empty because of problems and asbestos. But for the tenants that were there, about half the people that day didn't go to work. And it turned out people did get warnings not to go across the board. You're telling me military police are patrolling in some cases with their firearms unloaded and stowed? Absolutely. And, and, you know, we had one extreme case where the provost marshal was requiring his folks to, to get his, their magazines with ammunition. He sealed in a bag, and they had to check it out of the arms room and check it back in, um, in inside of this he sealed bag. And if it was open, they did a, what's called a 15-6 investigation, uh, commander's inquiry, as to why that uh, police officer, that military policeman, uh, open their heat shield bag. Man, talk so, about control <laughs> freaks. I mean, that's like where the Secretary of Defense, Panetta, remember, wouldn't be around armed troops. So as Obama takes credit for protecting us, even as they disarm us, the question is, who is he going to blame for this? Well, right away, they start blaming gun owners and the AR-15. Obama says uh, yesterday, just yesterday, which is an inter interesting coincidence that he would go on ABC News with George Stephanopoulos and say that we had 80 to 90 percent of the country that agreed with us on gun control. Really? I think he got those numbers confused. I think it was uh, 80 to 90 percent of the people who opposed him on his war with Syria. Maybe he didn't notice that last week a couple of Colorado Colorado state legislators were recalled. Now, this is historic. This is the first time in 100 years that they've had anybody recalled since they've had the law on the books. Basically, the voters there put these 
anti-gun legislators in front of a firing squad, essentially. They fired them in a, in a recall. But what Obama did yesterday, just before this happened, interesting timing, is he was deliberately telling a lie about the popularity of gun control. Although we know that there are still going to be people who are pushing for it, and it's still going to be a fight, and they're reviving this fight, obviously. We got the first salvo yesterday on the uh, Stephanopoulos show, and now we're getting more of it today. On CNN, Anthony Gucciardi noted that the top voted comment on CNN's uh, news site calls for a total gun ban. This is from somebody who identified themselves as Hillary 2016. It was one of the top three of the 11,000 strong comment sections. The commenter said, this is exactly why we need to stop hedging our bets and just start our campaign to outlaw all guns. Yes, they're going to come after all guns, but they're going to specifically come after rifles, after the AR-15. That seems to be the one that they've been after all year. Now, Kit Daniels had an interesting article talking about statistics, just how frequently, how likely are you to be shot by a rifle? Is that something that really is the weapon of choice in mass crimes? Is it the weapon of choice in burglaries and other shootings? No, actually, according to the FBI's crime statistics in the U.S., their 2012 statistics, all rifles, all rifles only account for 2.5%. That would be 322 deaths out of 12,765. Now, that rifles category is not broken down specifically, so we can assume that AR-15s are just a small portion of the overall rifles, so it's not even 2.5%. But that's what they're going to focus on. That's what they focused on in Sandy Hook, and they're going to focus on that again. And, of course, the uh, mainstream media is already starting to talk about AR-15s and blaming them. The question is, are you more likely to be shot by somebody in a mass shooting event or by a terrorist, or are you more likely to be shot by cops? Now, there's a lot of things, statistically, that are more risky than someone being shot. Certainly more risky than being shot in a terrorist event or in a mass shooter event. Well, as we warned you nine months ago, as Sandy Hook was unfolding, they're not going to be content with just taking the Second Amendment. They're going to come after the First Amendment as well. We were telling all the people on the left who were so eager to grab guns, we said, well, just watch out. They're going to come for the First Amendment as well. And we saw that just this last week. We saw two of the biggest gun grabbers, Dianne Feinstein and Chuck Schumer, start to come after the First Amendment, turning a fundamental right into a government-granted privilege, which is what they're trying to do with guns. They want to take away our free speech as well as our ability to protect ourselves and to constrain the government. So just be aware of this. This is all connected. It's not a Republican, Democrat. It's not left versus right. This is the authoritarians who want to take all of your liberties versus a libertarian approach where we keep our liberties, where we recognize fundamental God-given rights, and we don't turn them into government-granted privileges because we're worried about being safe. Now, right after the break, we're going to be back with some information that's going to affect your health as well as your privacy. So stay tuned. And after that, we're going to have Alex Jones coming in here, giving us the latest on this shooting in New York. InfoWarsStore.com, a conscious and involved distributor of independently made products that support a healthy and aware community. Dive into cleaner waters with your own ProPure system and Pro1D filter. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. We've handpicked a veritable treasure trove of the best non-GMO seed banks on the market. And our selection of films showcases a wealth of knowledge outdone only by our books. Check for combo packs to multiply your savings. Wear your colors proudly with one of these conversation starters. Now available in pink. Get prepared and fund the revolution at InfoWarsStore.com.
Well, another breaking news today, a typhoon is headed for Japan. And more alarming for the entire world, it's heading for Fukushima. It could very well affect the nuclear reactor there, which now two and a half years into the initial problems, meltdowns from earthquakes and floods, is still having problems. Typhoon Manyi has hit central Japan as officials have issued a special warning of heavy rain amidst fears that the storm could go on to hit the crippled Fukushima nuclear power plant. Now, here's the real problem, and this was something that they began talking about about a month ago when they were talking about the cleanup attempts and the different risks involved with it, the different techniques that they're going to use and what might happen during those techniques. The real problem are the spent fuel pools, as well as the reactor number four that they're trying to remove the spent nuclear rods from. And this could all really literally hit the fan with a typhoon coming in or some kind of a natural disaster like that. It's a very risky procedure, even without something like a typhoon. Now, a month ago, Reuters reported that containing the radiation equivalent to 14,000 times the amount of energy released in the atomic bomb attacks on Hiroshima 68 years ago, more than 1,300 used fuel rod assemblies are packed tightly together and need to be removed from a building that is vulnerable to collapse should another large earthquake hit the area, or I might add, a typhoon and tidal wave. Independent consultants said recently in their World Nuclear Industry Status Report in 2013, full release from the Unit 4 spent fuel pool without any containment or control, now here's the key, could cause by far the most serious radiological disaster to date. So this is something that could have worldwide consequences, especially for the West Coast of the United States. This is something that we really have to keep track of and you need to be aware of what you can do to protect your family against nuclear exposure. So keep an eye on this. This is something that really has been kind of pushed to the back as uh, the governments have tried to downplay the risk to the public, but this is a crisis that just keeps unfolding. And especially when you have a major disaster headed for the area, that could be the straw that causes the final collapse. Of course, it could all blow up as they try to remove these control rods because that's a very touchy, very dangerous situation. A tremendous amount of radiation could be released there. Now, it just gets more ridiculous as the government tries to control more and more of our life. Now, another threat to your health, of course, is Obamacare, but we also recognize that it's a tremendous threat to our privacy. We see now that Obamacare is going to be questioning your sex life, of all things. Expect that when you go to the doctor, you're going to ask, get asked questions like, are you sexually active? If so, with one partner, multiple partners, or same-sex partners. And as one cardiologist out of New York said, this is nasty business. He said the sex questions are insensitive, stupid, and very intrusive. <laughs> that kind of sums up uh, how we would describe government, isn't it? But of course, uh, Obamacare is stupid, insensitive, and intrusive. And so is the NSA. And look at what the people who run the NSA do. I mean, this would be very funny if it wasn't so serious, so dark. We have Keith Alexander, the man in charge of the NSA has modeled his office after the bridge of the Star Trek uh, Enterprise. Now, imagine this. This is a guy who is on some kind of a power trip, isn't he? Take a look at these pictures of the base there. In his base of operations, a facility known as the Information Dominance Center. Now, that tells you that the guy is on a power trip. <laughs> it had been designed by a Hollywood set designer to mimic the bridge of the Starship Enterprise from Star Trek complete with chrome panels, computer stations, a huge TV monitor, I think it's 20 feet across, on the forward wall, and doors that made a whoosh sound when they slide open and close. So that's a special, <laughs> they've got sound effects in their office. One guy said, everyone wanted to sit in the chair at least once to pretend he was Jean-Luc Picard. That was when a visiting congressional uh, delegation came to take a look at the new toys that the NSA was buying to spy on you, buying with your money. Now, Glenn, Glenn Greenwald is the one who found this, these pictures that were put out by the company that uh, created this uh, Star Trek uh, set here for the NSA to play with. And this is what he said, any casual review of human history proves how deeply irrational it is to believe that powerful factions can be trusted to exercise vast surveillance power with little accountability or transparency. But the more they proudly flaunt 
their warped imperial hubris, the more irrational it becomes. You know, it's not a, it's not a coincidence that we have the imperial march as Alex Jones's theme song. I think it's amazing to look at this picture of Michael Aquino and Spock. Now, of course, Spock is from Vulcan and Michael Aquino is a Satanist, somebody who's very high up in the NSA, somebody who has been alleged to be a child molester, someone who was a disciple of Anton LaVey and created the Temple of Set out in San Francisco. And he also wrote a paper from PSYOP, PSYOP to Mind War, The Psychology of Victory. And this guy who looks like Leonard Nimoy in Star Trek is one of the top NSA advisors from about 20 years ago. He's retired now, of course, but had very deep roots in Satanism. And as I mentioned before, he was a alleged child molester, but the military got him out of San Francisco. He didn't face any charges, although they paid the victims quite a bit of money. So this is the dark fantasy world that the leaders of the NSA live in. It's something we should all be very concerned about. Well, if you want authentic news as to what happens with this shooter event, as well as what's going on with the attempt to start a war in Syria, consider getting a subscription to Princeton Planet TV. It's something you can share with up to 10 of your friends at the same time, and it also helps to obviously support our operation here. Now, we're going to be right back after the break with Alex Jones, and he's going to give us his take on today's events at the Navy Yard. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happens. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. Well, welcome back. We're joined in the studio with Alex Jones, and he's going to give us his take on today's events. Now, things are changing as we go along, and the details are going to change. They've just dropped the search for the second shooter. But as we mentioned earlier today, even though rifles are only used in 2.5% of all the crimes, and it's not even clear, that's all rifles, it's not even clear what percentage AR-15s are of that. They're already focused on AR-15s. What, <laughs> what do you think about that, Alex? Well, this is very clear why they're doing it. It's because it is the militia assault rifle to defend ourselves against a tyrannical invasion or a occupational government. And it's very, very simple. They want to go after arms that could be used uh, to protect yourself from corrupt uh, infantry. And it's also a weapon that's very uh, easily used by the general public. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden says, go get a shotgun and fire it off your front porch that's a felony randomly. He says, but don't get an AR-15 or M4 because it's so easy to use and so effective. But the big issue here tonight is the mass hoax that gun crime is up. We have a story on Infowars.com where the top comment of tens of thousands on the CNN website uh, is someone saying it's time to elect Hillary Clinton and ban all the guns. And the handle is elect Hillary Clinton 20, 2016. So this is the type of garbage that we're dealing with. Meanwhile, even the LA Times and Forbes have reported 
that since 1992 to 2011, the latest gun numbers, there's been a 49% drop in overall gun crime, as high as a 75% uh, percent drop uh, in general violent crime. So there has been a massive, massive, massive drop in crime. We have the maps where gun ownership has exploded and where concealed carries come in. You have just seen massive drops in crime. And that's a fact versus the perception that the LA Times breaks down in national studies that gun crime or crimes where guns are used is at epic levels. I mean, you would believe, uh, I've likened it to uh, when Jaws came out in the early 70s. For several years, uh, they saw upwards of 50% reduction, especially on the East Coast. People thought it was real, even though it was fiction, that on the East Coast, up in Nantucket and other areas, that giant great white sharks were eating everybody. The truth is there's about five great white shark deaths a year on average globally, but my wife will not go past her ankles in the ocean because she's afraid of sharks. Uh, most people I know are, are scared and, and won't go out uh, and won't go scuba diving because they're afraid of sharks, even though there are about five great white deaths a year, maybe 25 to 30, depending on the, if you count tiger sharks, makos. Uh, and some of the other sharks that occasionally attack people. I mean, you've got a better chance of being struck by lightning three times uh, than you do in some statistical analysis by a great white shark. Believe it or not, people sometimes get struck multiple times the same day if there's a bad lightning storm as they're getting you know, towards their car trying to get away. So this is just uh, some of the uh, information out there that the public uh, is not aware of because they're just being propagandized. This is mind control. If you have over 150,000 people killed since the globalists launched the Al-Qaeda attacks almost three years ago in Syria, they're chopping off Christians' heads. They're blowing up churches in mass. Uh, two million Christians have fled uh, Syria uh, in just the last uh, two and a half years. But, oh, they're not personalizing their deaths. Mm -hmm. uh, they're only personalizing uh, the 12 dead, 15 injured. And the, the Daily Mail and others are already saying, revealed gunman 34, Aaron Alexis, who murdered 12 people. And so is other media here in the U.S., not just in England. We don't know if this guy's a patsy. We don't know if this was a false flag. May not have been. But if we have a government that's been caught doing it before, yeah. and if it's in Operation Northwoods, how to stage shootings at military bases and blame patsies, that's declassified uh, 2001, early 2001. If we have Hitler staging mass shootings at military bases to start World War II and Operation Himmler, then the public has got to look at this and say, if they lied about WMDs, if, if the rebels clearly staged the chemical attack that killed hundreds of people. You know, the media says, I'm saying a chemical attack didn't happen. No. I said day one, the rebels uploaded videos of them doing it and bragged like they did the two previous times. So there's also a lot of straw man stuff going on. Media Matters came out, run by the White House, and said that uh, I basically, you know, believe this is already a false flag. No, I didn't believe that Boston was a false flag immediately until we learned there was a drill. Then they tried to cover it up. Then we learned the two brothers, one of them worked for the CIA, uh, and then the whole uh, connections, the background, all the other points, the drill with the uh, operatives. Then you begin to see witnesses being executed. Then you see the motive. Then you understand uh, what's happening. But separately, this could be some type of Islamic connection. But just like with the Major Hassan at Fort Hood, he killed 13 people. They said this is not terror-related because that was one of their wind-up toys that got out of control. It turned out the CIA was monitoring him for two years, talking to the head of al-Nazra, the leader of al-Qaeda, Ayman al-Zawahiri, coming out last week and saying, attack America with things like mass shootings, bombings, you name it. I don't know if that's what's happened here. But in the cases I just said of the Fort Hood shooting, we know that he was in contact with this very gentleman for two years in emails, phone calls, and also Adam Gadon, uh, the uh, grandson of the ADL head, who's you know become the leader of Al-Qaeda. Again, these guys are globalist operatives, but they're actually handling real extremist and mentally ill people. We don't know if that's the case yet. We're only speculating. It could have been he was mad that he was kicked out of the Navy, reportedly, uh, a few years ago and, and was dishonorably discharged. We don't know. This could be a going postal event. And if that's the case, again, I go back to the statistics. 
It's always in a gun-free zone. Right. You'd think a military base would be crawling with weapons. It's actually highly restricted who could have uh, guns on those military bases. In and fact, we had callers call in about that today. That's right, and I, and I looked into it. Uh, some bases don't even allow the MPs to have uh, loaded guns. They have to go back to barracks and check them out. Wow. And, and, and that was uh, pretty much what happened at Fort Hood. So bottom line, this is an example, an exercise uh, in mind control that the public on average believes that there's an epidemic of mass shootings and overall gun crime when it's the opposite. And if statistics continue to go like this and increased gun ownership happens, we're going to see in a few years a 75 percent or 80 or 90 percent reduction. The only places that have increasing crime are Chicago, New York, D.C., L.A., San Francisco, places that have draconian victim disarmament because only law-abiding citizens follow the law. And I know the viewers know this mainly, but it's up to us to get the statistics, the numbers we just showed you, the L.A. Times admitting it, and get it out to everybody you know. Because there's an info war happening right now, and we barely beat them restricting our guns and shutting down private transfers and things uh, with the whole Sandy Hook debacle. Again, somebody that tried to get guns five times and finally was able to get them illegally. They're coming, folks. They're coming. Obama launched a new gun control thing Sunday on Meet the Press with, with Stephanopoulos. So now they're coming. This is another big push. It's on. They're not going to quit. And it may be in the cards that they're going to stage some more stuff and blame it on patriot groups. They're going to come through this suspect uh, who's now been shot and killed, um, Aaron Alexis's computer. You can bet if you ever visited Infowars.com, which millions of people do a day, uh, that we're going to be blamed for it. Just like uh, MSNBC a month ago said, Alex Jones and Libertarians are behind the Boston bombing. Mm -hmm. No proof. Mm -hmm. uh, he reportedly picked up one of the brothers, a free magazine. Uh, in town that's kind of libertarian. Well, that's the proof. That was found at his house. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like if you find a, uh, a a pool magazine that's mailed to my house. It doesn't matter that I don't have a pool. It, right. That means I've murdered my wife in the pool. That's right. Even though yeah. she's not dead and I don't have a pool. It, it, it's like incredible witch hunt, guilt by association they're engaged in. Now, in fairness, the family said the brothers were listeners. Uh, and maybe that's why they decided to burn them, because the older brother was in a program to infiltrate radical groups. He was funded by Georgetown University in a program, CIA funded, to go to the Caucasus. He had a fake name. They allowed him to travel on. Russia had blown his cover three years ago saying, hey, is this guy an agent? This guy a spy? Those are the type of cutouts they used. Did this young man, this 34-year-old person, um, Aaron Alexis, did he... Take part in a drill. They're having drills all over the East Coast right now. And then suddenly he's shot in the real drill. They said he kept shooting at people and, and then nothing would happen. And it was like, man, he was a horrible, horrible shot, it seemed like. They also told people in the cafeteria where he was supposedly shooting from above, they told him, stay in place. Don't run. Uh, witnesses said that, but they followed their instincts and got out alive. So th this could be a going postal event because he was dishonorably discharged. Mm -hmm. This could be in my gut. Uh, could be that, could be a Muslim wind-up toy, Muslim extremist. We don't know. But regardless, statistically, we're more safe because of guns, not less safe. That's a fact. That's not my opinion. But all over TV, it's, will you finally let us take the guns? Well, sorry, it's a military base where he got through with a fake ID pass, they claim, and they started shooting people like fish in a barrel. So it doesn't jive. It's in a city that has total disarmament yeah. for the citizens. It's on a military base within another ring of security. Mm -hmm. And the answer is the only way to have the lowest level of loss when a crazy guy goes off the rails is to have the largest number trained in the use of firearms. Because wherever firearms are, there is liberty, as George Washington said. I want to give you the closing comments in the three minutes we've got left, David Knight, here tonight, um, breaking this down. Well, I thought it was interesting that one of the first persons to come out and say, we've got to renew the gun control legislation again was, of course, Dianne Feinstein. And you can reliably count on Feinstein and Schumer to always be there against the Second Amendment. And they were the ones last week we were talking about coming after the First Amendment. And they've supported the Fairness Doctrine in the past to shut down talk radio. Oh, absolutely. So and now the idiot license... media is asking, why is Drudge upset about this when it takes the press freedom from everybody else and only gives it to select lapdogs? And then they call that defending free speech. Go ahead. 
Well, and they, you talk about the AR-15 being something that they're focused on because it's such an effective weapon. The Internet is what they're focused on because as far as the First Amendment and free speech goes, that is the AR-15 of the First Amendment is the Internet. So they want to shut that down however they can, whether they can use some kind of corporate fascism like that we saw with CISPA and SOPA where they use copyright claims to take down people's websites. That's what Verizon process. says they want. Exactly. And, and that was, uh, we subsequently learned that they're turning over all this information to the government anyway, that really CISPA and these other pieces of legislation are just to give protection to these companies that are being uh, both coerced by the NSA and also paid by the NSA to turn this information over. But the point being is that for the people who want to jump on this gun control bandwagon, people who consider themselves to be leftists or Democrats or whatever, they need to look at this and understand that the real division here is between the authoritarians who are always after your internet freedom, always after your free speech, always you after your guns. Want to know what you're doing bedroom exactly. under Obamacare. Exactly. They want to control everything about you, and that includes your ability to defend yourself. So it's authoritarians versus libertarians, libertarians as right. you and others have been saying. Yeah. And we need to hang loose together. I guess that's a satanic hand sign. It just means let's go surfing. We need to, we need to surf the Internet to defeat this new tyranny. Because here's the bottom line, folks. The fight is coming for your guns, your free speech, your medical records, what's going on in your Everything. bedroom. We get these 500-question surveys here saying we'll arrest you if you don't answer them. There's no law behind that. And, and, and they, you don't tell them who you have sex with or if you're a virgin or if you're married or you're gay or whatever it is. That is your business, ladies and gentlemen. And it's now time to realize that all of this is going on. And, and, and you were on target during the news. I watched it earlier before I came in here, David, about all the things we're facing. I'll finish up those points. Well, that's just it, Alex. It, it, people need to understand that it's the people who are pushing for war. It's the people who are pushing for gun control, who are pushing for authoritarian control of the Internet stopping free speech, spying on everyone about everything. So it's, it's, a, it's a consistency that you see now developing. They're attacking they're, every sector of freedom. Absolutely. Whether they're Democrats or whether they're Republicans, they're still coming after every bit of your freedom. It's always after your liberty. That's where it breaks down. People need to stop aligning themselves with Dianne Feinstein. They need to see the bigger picture about where guns fit in. Absolutely. This woman has bodyguards. This woman is a predator who simply wants to disarm the people. And now is the time that yeah. the sleeping giant awaken right now, folks. They're moving on every front because they know you are waking up. Take this video off PrisonPlanet.tv and the nightly news. Get out to everyone you know. If you have a membership, 11 people can share it. Give it to friends and family. Tell them, tune in live at 7 o'clock every night when the show premieres. Go to InfoWars.com. Go to Real Alex Jones. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, we are putting up the greatest defense we can for liberty, and it's having an effect because of your support. We don't take your money like NPR via taxes or MSNBC. We're funded by patriots like you. Absolutely. If you want to know what's going on, if you want authentic stories, if you want the true story about what's happening, tune in tomorrow night at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern to InfoWars Nightly News. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show.